My name is Marion Cahill, and in this case study, the topic I will be addressing is the use of pesticides. How could such a positive concept result in such devastating effects? The use of pesticides dates all the way back to the 1930s, and it was increasingly popular after the time of World War II. The initial motive of pesticides was to increase food production and control or contain harmful pests and insects that may interact with developing crops. By doing this, the idea was that farmers would then be able to produce higher crop yields and prevent the population from having times of hunger or having times of famine ever again. However, manufacturers were blind to the harmful effects of pesticides that would raise attention in years to come. The severity of these negative consequences weren't fully understood until research later showed that pesticides resulted in multiple health problems within humans and detrimental effects on the environment. With about 5.6 billion tons of pesticides used worldwide, these effects were noticed on a global scale and people finally began having a problem with the use of pesticides around the early 1960s. Now, in present day, some of the most commonly used pesticides are organochlorines, organophosphates, carbamates, and pyrethroids. Each have an equally negative impact as they do a positive impact. Pesticides may cause harsh but short-term health effects as well as chronic effects that may become noticeable months to even years after exposure to pesticides. However, pesticides also are used to improve the quality of crops and can rid crops of vector-borne diseases such as malaria, which can be very harmful or even deadly to humans. As you can see, pesticides hold both a positive and negative impact on our world, making them very controversial throughout society. So at this point, you may be wondering just who is affected by pesticides? Like, who all is affected by pesticides? And although there's a large spectrum of people who are affected by pesticides, there are some people who are put at a greater risk of being affected by them than others. And this includes young children, infants, farm workers, and pesticide applicators. Farm workers and pesticide applicators are at probably the greatest risk due to the amount of interaction that they have with the chemicals. Well, now that you know who pesticides affect, you may be wondering what are the effects. So, there are short-term and long-term effects that reside with pesticide exposure. Um, and the short-term health effects may include, but uh, are not limited to, singing eyes, rashes, blisters, blindness, nausea, dizziness, diarrhea, and death. And some of the longer chronic effects may include cancers, birth defects, reproductive harm, neurological and development toxicity, and immunotoxicity, and disruption of the endocrine system. Pesticides do have an economic impact, and that is that when pesticides are used, the economic potential of crops increase. This is because pesticides increase crop production and survival rates of crops. A farmer who uses pesticides will most likely end up with an abundance of healthy, well-grown crops to sell, as opposed to a farmer who may choose not to use them. The more crops a farmer has to sell, the more money they will make. This puts whoever chose to include the pesticide use into their crop growing process at an economic advantage, and this is a huge reason as to why some people advocate for the use of pesticides. Pesticides have also reached into the realm of politics. Some of the largest pesticide companies, known as the Big Six, have recently been strongly involved with federal politics. These corporations spent large amounts of money to win over officials when it comes to the regulations, tolerance, and safety of their pesticides. Some federal officials have accused these corporations of violating human rights, including the rights to health, livelihood, and life. The jury is trying to hold these corporations to criminal liability and keep them accountable for the negative consequences of their agrochemical industry. Environmental issues are some of pesticides' biggest consequences. Pesticides pose severe threats to the environment, they do a large amount of contamination, and this includes contamination of water, soil, turf, and other vegetation. Pesticides affect soil fertility also, making it more and more difficult to efficiently grow crops. This is because pesticides have a negative effect on soil microorganisms, causing the quality of soil to decrease and produce less crops. When pesticides run off from where plants are treated with them into bodies of water or places of concentration of a specific organism, it can severely harm the species and cause their numbers to dwindle, and this causes a big problem, sometimes a gap in the ecosystem. And this is a huge reason as to why some people strongly are against pesticides. And believe it or not, pesticides do also have a social impact. Since pesticides do ruin soil fertility, they also ruin farms and their ability to grow crops. And when the farmers are unable to grow crops, they simply go bankrupt and get put out of business and into a financial crisis. Situations like this can ruin someone's life, and these situations also make people push for using pesticides less and less. 
just going over what are the arguments against this topic why are people against pesticides well people think pesticides are bad for a multitude of reasons pesticides affect soil fertility they can contaminate soil water turf and other vegetation uh they contaminate surface water and groundwater and they affect non-targeted organisms which damages ecosystems and food chains and not only are there these environmental consequences but also the health concerns people can be exposed to pesticides through their skin eyes nose and even their mouth um and this can cause short-term and long-term health effects that can be moderate to severe in humans after hearing about all these negative consequences that come with pesticides you may be wondering why do people still support pesticides well, people believe pesticides are good for a few reasons. When pesticides are used on plants or crops, it increases the production of that specific crops or plants by getting rid of or controlling harmful pests or insects. Uh, pesticides may also control vector diseases and prevent them, such as malaria, that have high morbidity rates to humans and can cause a large amount of casualties or deaths. Pesticides increase productivity and crop yielding, and can have a large economic benefit since farmers or manufacturers of certain crops may now be making more crops that decreases the risk of famine and allows for farmers or manufacturers to achieve larger levels of income or profit. With how detrimental some of these effects are, you would think that the world would have already had some solutions, right? Eh, kind of. With more and more people becoming aware of the negative effects of pesticides, the world is starting to investigate outbreaks and accidental exposure to pesticides and other study cases and analyses. With more information, the people are trying to find a way to either safely use pesticides or stop the use of them completely to ensure safer living for anyone who gets directly or indirectly exposed to pesticides. Many individuals around the world have felt that the use of pesticides is not right and just unsafe, so they have been protesting to try to get the use of pesticides removed completely. All of this information really leaves us all wondering one thing. What is going to happen? What are the future actions that are going to be taken on this issue? Well, if in the future nothing's done to prevent the further risks and harmful effects of pesticides, the federal law may have to be involved in shutting down or minimizing the use of them. In the future, they may be modified so they don't portray the negative effects they do now and instead still retain their positive effects, like increasing crop production. My final opinion on the subject is that the idea of using pesticides was harmless and very smart, but the consequences were not so great. It was clearly not intended, it was a mistake, but if in the near future nothing has changed to reduce or stop the negative effects of pesticides completely, then it really just shows that the corporations that produce them don't really care about how it affects people or the environment and just care about the money. I think actions should be made immediately to eradicate or reduce the amount of people who are harmed or killed by pesticides. Ah yes, one of many teenage girls doing her homework on a school night, wishing she had a healthy but tasty snack. Where's that come? Pretty spot on, right? Yeah. Well, maybe you should try something that's definitely good for you and has some extra ingredients that you can't even pronounce. I wish, but I have nothing. Wait, where, how'd you get in the room? It's better if you don't ask questions. Take my word, mm-hmm, healthy. Here, look. Oh. Healthy? Are you sure? I, I said no questions. A stranger just threw ice cream at me. I'm gonna ask questions. I didn't mean to hit you. Let me, let me take that. In case you didn't know, this is Ben and Jerry's ice cream. One pint of this stuff is only 990 calories. One serving, which is two thirds of a cup. There's 28 grams of sugar, but don't worry, don't worry. Only 27 of them are added. So like there's like that little 1% that's natural. With 16 grams of fat, 115 grams of sodium, and 43 carbs, this is the snack for you. I mean, I guess so. <laughs> okay, I trust you. Ben and Jerry's ice cream is a nutritious, calorie-dense, sweet treat that will solve all your cravings. Buy a pint and increase your chance of getting heart disease in your late 60s. Mmm, gotta love high blood pressure. Grab a pint at your local grocery store today.